Hi, my name is Fred Van Dam. I'm the college tutor at East Surrey Hospital. I'm here to tell you about our anaesthetic department. Uh, we currently have 34 consultants and 15 trainees from KSS Deanery and also four speciality doctors in the John Hammond anaesthetic department. Hello, my name is Dr. Kafour. Um, I'm one of the anaesthetists here at East Surrey Hospital. Um, East Surrey Hospital um, is quite a large um, hospital, uh, district general hospital for the area. We actually split over two sites. We have a slightly smaller hospital, which is Crawley Hospital, which is about 20, 25 minutes drive away. And that site normally has day case surgery taking place. Um, very uncomplicated ASA one or two patients. In this hospital, we tend to have four major areas where you will find yourself working. You'll have main theatres, which is where the bulk of all of our operations take place. Um, main theatres actually also has a satellite theatre called Princess Alexandra Theatres, which is at the other end of the hospital. And then you have Limpsfield Eye Unit, which is more local anaesthesia for the eye and eye lists, um, although they do spill over into main theatres sometimes. Um, adjoining theatres is the obstetric department. So uh, next to the obstetric department is your emergency obstetric theatres, next to your CPOD theatres. And the only other area is intensive care, which is, if you walk through the department, next door, effectively. Um, and there you have an intensive care unit with 10 beds and a, and a high dependency unit with six beds. We're on the first floor, there are two floors to this hospital. Um, we're outside our 10 bedded intensive care unit, um, adjacent to which is our six bedded high dependency unit. Um, and we have our main meeting room on that side with the coffee room over there on that side. Uh, the main heads of the unit in terms of nursing staff and matrons uh, are here on this side and the ITU consultants are on this side. So we're all within this small area. Straight through this corridor over here is main theatres, which we'll show you next. We're in the main theatre complex. Um, if you're doing the obstetric on-call section, then effectively you'll be in this theatre, which is mainly just for emergency obstetric theatres. Uh, as you walk through this corridor, just beyond that wall there is Labour Ward. Uh, your SHO will be in uh, CPOD theatre mainly at the end of that corridor. The main, other main theatre corridors are down there, so you have other members of staff to give you a hand if you need to. And intensive care is straight past that wall back there. Recovery's over here, all the other theatres are there, so during the day you always have somebody to give you support, and during the night time we're all together, we're not in disparate parts of the hospital. We have a handover at 8 o'clock in the mornings uh, at the Seaport Board. Um, and then we have handover in ITU uh, at 8 o'clock as well uh, in the morning. Obstetric handover will be on the labour ward and it will be an obstetric ward round at about 9.30 in the morning with the obstetric consultant on call as well as the anaesthetic consultant on call for that day. Our week is uh, divided up into lists into morning and afternoons. Um, so we always have a meeting before every list um, to talk through the patients that are on it and to sort of make a plan. If you tend to be one of the more junior doctors, then you'll be mainly in East Surrey Hospital where there are many, many people to give you um, support and advice and you will always be with somebody. For instance, if you're on a list, you'll usually be on that list um, on the morning with a consultant or a senior registrar and then in the afternoon if you move to another list you'll then again have a consultant and a registrar. Um, usually we will appear in the hospital at about quarter to eight in the morning to give us time to then go and start seeing the patients um, and then the lists normally finish with enough time to have half an hour break and then starting for the afternoon lists. Occasionally there are overruns. If you are junior, you will normally be let out at about 5 to 5.30. And occasionally we do have lists which extend to about 7, 7.30, depending on which site you're on. Across the entire year, I spend the entire year um, in the anaesthetic department in theatres, rather than obstetrics or ITU. Um, you spend the first three months of it getting your competencies up, so you have like a three months of eight or six or whatever hours, it's, you know, it's normal standard hours, um, of building up your skills so that you feel confident and competent to be able to deliver an anaesthetic on your own safely. We have four on-call uh, tiers. Um, one will be obstetrics, which is normally somebody who's fairly senior, who's been signed off um, and have done obstetrics before. Uh, CPOD is normally run by either CT1s or 2s and we have the occasional um, registrar or speciality doctor on that rotor. The most senior people or people who are doing the intensive care modules will be on the intensive care rotor on call. There's a fourth tier which we've added because the intensive care has got 16 beds um, and they will basically look after the high dependency unit. 
And these, these are mostly core medical trainees and we have two FY1s as well, which are fairly junior members of staff and they will be supervised by the intensive care registrar. The advantage of doing on-calls in this hospital as opposed to other hospitals is your registrar for ITU will not be off-site or eight miles away in a different hospital. Um, in this hospital, intensive care is next door to theatres, which is next door to obstetrics. The advantage of that is that you're always able to get support. And in amongst your group, you're normally in wi with the same people. So the, the ITU registrar will normally have, on the whole, the same um, junior CT or FY with them on their rotors and that ITU registrar will be with the same obstetric registrar and the same SHO. So that trio of anaesthetists generally is fairly consistent. You have two consultants on, there's a consultant on for intensive care and there's a consultant on for obstetrics. And very often it's, it's very, very easy to um, get support and get help. They're always within 20 minutes away. During the weekends, the on-call consultant will be in from eight o'clock until six o'clock in, um, in the afternoon. Uh, Saturdays and Sundays with an on-call consultant uh, after six o'clock. Um, so you have senior cover seven days a week. When you start you will all be appointed or you will all get an educational supervisor which will be your educational supervisor for uh, your time you spent in the department. Um, you need to have um, a free monthly meeting with them okay and then informal meetings every month just to see how you prog uh, you're progressing for your, your uh, rotation. If there's any problems, you can always uh, see me. Uh, the one thing that's consistent in terms of learning is for us as trainees, we always have our Friday afternoons of teaching. Um, so that's a whole afternoon dedicated towards our educational improvement, um, where we take turns across a two, three month period to deliver a, a teaching to each other. So you may be delivering the teaching for that week with one of your consultants helping supervise your learning objectives and to make sure that you stay on track. Part of the teaching we have half day clinical governance days uh, which we present either audits um, or anything you've done in the department which makes it very easy to get um, it signed off and con complete your audit cycle um, for your ARCP. Uh, we do run a yearly John Hammond poster competition, which is a regional competition which we ask all our trainees uh, to participate and put in a poster. Here at East Surrey Hospital we do have a large um, remit for regional anaesthesia. Um, and so, for instance, to take that as an example, um, if, you, if you are not the regional fellow but you do wish to take, uh, take part in doing more blocks, it's very, very easy to find out which list you're more likely to be interested in and even if you weren't able to be on that list to at least be bleeped to go along and review the block or take part in um, spinals or whichever whatever your needs are um, and so there's always the opportunity to actually have teaching um, it's, it is mainly centered around main main theatres um, and if there are any interesting cases those are usually flagged up amongst the department most of the time it's, it's, it's fairly easy to be able to go and see interesting cases and do interesting things most of your modules you can complete with us. We do do obstetrics, intensive care, airway, intermediate airway, uh, we can do ENT, paediatrics. We do quite do a lot of trauma and seaport work as well. And the obstetric unit is quite busy with about four and a half to 5,000 deliveries a year. It's going to be a busy rotation. For the first three months, when we are doing our uh, sort of initial assessment of our competencies to be able to do anaesthesia, um, it was very well supported and it's continued to be that well supported as well. And as we sort of made the transition onto being on call, um, you find yourself doing, delivering anaesthe um, anaesthesia for patients on your own when you're feeling confident uh, to be able to do that. But you always know that there's always somebody on the end of the phone line to be able to help you out if, you, if, if there's a question. Hi, my name's Shirley. I'm the anaesthetic department manager. Um, welcome to the Trust. I mean, if you have any problems or queries, please feel free to come and see me and I'll try to help. Um, you can find our office in, along by the theatres on the first floor of the uh, hospital. We do have a, a formal way of doing feedback. We have an online app for the consultants, which is based on the Royal College of Anaesthetists uh, feedback form. Um, you do need to ask sometimes for the consultants to fill this in. Um, you will get informal feedback after your, your list. Okay, but this is more formal feedback and you can have a printout at the end of your rotation with all the feedback from all the consultants. 
which makes it very easy to put into your ARCP documentation. With anaesthetics more than other specialties, I've noticed that there's a very, uh, there's a lot more communication between the educational supervisor and the trainee. It's a lot more of a mentorship sort of role as opposed to a tick box exercise, which has I have experienced in other places. Um, so that's really nice to have that support and somebody that you feel that you can actually go to if there's a problem. There is an app which has our rotor on. The rotor not only allows us obviously to know where we are, wake up in the morning, have a look at the rotor, we know which site we're going to be going to, um, but also it allows us to view our annual leave, book our annual leave, book our study leave. Um, all leave requests go to um, through the department um, and usually there's a delay of a, a few days until um, you're then informed on the app whether that's been approved or not. There's an app for um, most of our guidelines it's more useful for obstetrics because it just so happens that most of the anaesthetic obstetric guidelines happen to be on the app. Uh, there's also an app from the microbiology department, our micro guide, um, for all the various antibiotics we may need to give in various situations. Um, and there is one final app which also um, I find quite useful simply because it lists everybody's bleep numbers. My advice to anybody who's doing what I've just done now uh, with retrospect uh, is to hit the ground running first and foremost and have a list of the things that you actually need to tick off that you carry around with you um, as, a, as a checklist of things. Uh, it wasn't until I was in my fourth or fifth month when I realised there was a whole bunch of extra stuff that was part of my initial assessment of competence for anaesthetics which I hadn't done and then I needed to try and do in addition to the, all the other things that I was doing. Um, so there's always extra little tidbits and often your senior, junior colleagues are the best people to ask, people who have recently done it. The range of pathology that we have in this hospital is quite wide and varied. Um, and it's quite nice because when, when it gets busy, everybody manages to, everybody is able to pull together. Um, and we tend to find that as a department, I think you will definitely find that the anaesthetic department is probably the the one department where everyone tends to get on more than any other. Along the way in this hospital as, as an F1, I've made friends across every single one of the rotations that I've done, whether it's been in surgery, medicine, and it doesn't matter whether you're working in either the surgical or the medical departments, you can make friends across specialties. It's certainly one of the friendliest hospitals that I've worked in. So on behalf of the John Hammond Anaesthetic Department, we welcome you to our department. Uh, it's a very nice hospital to work at, very friendly and very approachable. So I hope you enjoy your rotation with us.